Yo, what up guys? I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Puma Sky model. So this shoe is going for 130 bucks, a pretty competitive price point. Definitely not a budget shoe, but definitely not a very high price and very expensive shoe. I'd say it's right smack in the middle. If you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. But let's get it started off with the traction. There's quite a few colors on this outsole. Kind of reminds me of like a Google logo or something. And there's quite a few patterns on this. You got a few curved lines here in the forefoot. You have some straight lines. You have a waffle pattern. And then you have a metal grade pattern in the heel. That's just what I'm calling it. And then as far as the traction goes on the clean court, it's, it's a pretty good stop. You know, I wouldn't say it's the best and the hardest stop I've ever experienced. But um, it's pretty good. It gets the job done. But the performance on dust was lackluster. It picks up a, uh, like a lot of dust. It picks it up very quickly too. And it's really hard to wipe off. You know, like some shoes, it's just like, and then you're good to go. And then it's like not a huge deal. But then this shoe, you really have to like wipe. And then once you really wipe, you have a few good stops. And then it picks up dust really quickly again. And if you let too much dust pick up, I had a few instances where I, I would slide out a little bit and it felt moderately dangerous. So uh, you just gotta be careful on that. Like if you don't mind wiping a lot, then it's not a huge deal. But you know, for those of you that don't like wiping too much, then this probably isn't the best option. As far as the durability goes, the rubber is very hard. The grooves are thick, especially this green part and this yellow part here in the midfoot. It's a really, really thick thick rubber so durability seems good and I also really don't have any fraying on this outsole either so if you're gonna play with these outdoors you'll be okay uh, but for me I usually play on a moderately dusty court and I really didn't enjoy the performance of the outsole All right, moving on to the heel to toe transition. It's pretty damn smooth. You know, you have a nice curve shape here in the heel, nice curve shape here in the forefoot. It's not the craziest curve up I've ever seen. You know, it's, it's, it, I'd say it's a little bit more flat, but it's okay because you have a pretty nice flex in the forefoot and a pretty nice compression in the heel. So heel to toe transition is smooth. It's not clunky or anything. As far as the cushion goes, they're using a full length pro foam. And uh, Pro Foam is definitely not one of my favorite cushion setups. It definitely doesn't feel like a light cushion setup. You know, like if you feel it, it feels like a very, very dense cushion. And like it, it's pretty soft, but then that's it. You know, like it doesn't really have a lot of bounce. Uh, it's more just plush and soft. But then they cage it up a good amount here in the heel because of this gnarly ass heel counter. So I mean like uh, you can feel a little bit of heel compression here on the sides But that's just when you really want to feel it Like if you really want to feel it Like you're, when you're doing this putting your toes up and you really want to feel the cushion That's when you feel it But then when you're like playing jogging around and stuff like that It's a lot harder to feel One good thing about the cushion setup though Is that it's really really low to the ground It doesn't seem like it is But you actually are Like in the forefoot It's really damn low As well as in the heel So court feel is really good I like that I Impact protection was okay You know my feet didn't hurt or anything while doing hard impacts so like it's definitely not a horrible or bad cushion setup by any means but like I expected a little bit more you know like I wanted a little bit more bounce I wanted it to be a little bit softer and all that but like if you're looking for a responsive cushion you know like there's not a lot of lag or anything uh, it has good impact protection um, then this is a solid setup but for me it didn't really meet my expectations but you know it gets the job done as far as the materials go there's an underlying material I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is I'm pr it's probably like a polyester or something like that and then you have another type of material that they glued on over that uh, it reminds me of the element 55 but then there's some space in between these strands like the element 55 is more just like a, a sheet of material this is more just like a woven material and then here in the forefoot area you have some fuse and uh, you have some leather and suede touches. The leather quality is actually really nice in the shoe, which I was surprised about. And overall, I really like it. You know, the forefoot material is super soft. Look, it conforms to your foot really well, but there's like no stretch to it. So it's supportive, it's thin, and it's minimal feeling here in the forefoot. Once you get into the ankle area, there's a good amount of padding, which I like, and, and also a good amount of padding in the tongue. So the overall materials are very nice, you know, especially if you like old school materials like leather and suede. And I feel like they do a very good job in black 
blending modern materials with old school materials. As far as the fit goes, you can go true to size. In the four foot area, it's pretty snug. I wouldn't say it was choking my foot out or anything, which is good. And also another thing is like the material didn't really stretch out all that much. So the fit that you start out with is probably the fit that you're gonna end up with. So if it's a little too tight, you should probably go up half a size. And the width wise, I would say it's normal to slightly narrow. So for me, the fit was really good. Also, another thing is like this shoe is obviously a high, very, very high, high, and it's really hard to put on, but that's just how highs are. As far as the support and lockdown goes, it's incredible. I mean, here on the lateral side, you have the suede materials. So my foot was locked in and not, my foot wasn't going anywhere on lateral movements. You have a little bit of an outrigger as well. So lateral stability is good. And then here in the angle area, you have a lot of ankle support, which I don't like. Personally, I like to play in lows a lot better. And just like playing in highs isn't good for you. This part especially restricts the movement of your Achilles. So obviously when you're like jumping up and down, when you're going like this and you're landing, obviously your Achilles and your calf muscle is gonna absorb some of that impact, right? But then if you can't effectively move your Achilles or you can't do this type of movement very well, a lot of that impact is absorbed by your knees. So a lot of people are saying, you know, if you play in highs, it's not good for your knees. Obviously, it's really good if you're coming off an ankle injury or something like that. And also, you just feel like restricted. Like you just notice the shoe on your foot. All right, as far as the weight goes, uh, I remember the shoe being, <laughs> yeah. So basically 16 ounces for the shoe. I mean, that surprises me a little bit because I mean like the material is just so thin. Like I really like how thin the material is. It feels very minimal. I feel like most of the weight is coming from the rubber outsole and the foam. So if they could develop a better foam, you know, very lightweight foam with good impact protection and a little bit of bounce, uh, that would be incredible. I wish they would do that. But yeah, this shoe definitely feels heavy, uh, especially with this high for me. It wasn't a shoe that I can forget I had on, you know? And then like with this heel counter, it, like it's just so thick and robust, like you don't need all this. And from the past models, like the Puma Clyde Court, the other Puma shoe, I don't really remember what it's called, but I'll put a picture here. Uh, the Puma Clyde hardwood, all of them were around 14 to 15 ounces, which is pretty damn heavy. So I feel like in the future, if they can work on something, definitely please make your shoes lighter. And now moving on to the ventilation, this shoe is very, very hot, especially with this high ankle. I mean, <laughs> like my foot was very sweaty, very warm. So if you can, if you have a very sweaty foot and you tend to get blisters, you're probably gonna have to take this shoe off during games and let your foot cool down if you need to. As far as the durability goes, I feel like it'll be very good. The outsole is very durable and this material, like there's a lot of overlay of suede and leather and uh, there's some fuse as well. And the upper seems very well made too. So durability seems pretty damn nice. As far as the step and comfort goes, uh, it should be okay. The material is pretty damn comfortable on foot and the cushion is pretty comfortable too. I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable shoe I've ever worn, but it's, it's pretty comfortable. As far as the aesthetics go, I really like how these shoes look. Like most of their basketball shoe models, it has more of a casual off-court vibe, which I really like. So you don't have to buy a ball shoe and like a off-court shoe, you know? You can, you can wear this off-court and on-court. So tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. So wrapping things up, I, I mean, okay, so first of all, 130 bucks. I feel like with the material that they use and all that, the, the price is justified, but for performance, I don't think it is. I mean, the traction, especially on dust, because I play on a dusty court, was not good. The cushion was pretty lackluster, especially with my expectations. The materials are okay. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best quality materials. It doesn't look or feel like, you know, battle knit or anything, but you know, it gets the job done on foot. And also the two things I really, really didn't like about the shoe is the weight and the high cut, which makes me very interested in a low cut version of the shoe. I wonder if they'll make one, but there's just something with the Clyde hardwood that they did right. You know, like with the knit material and the forefoot and the traction being actually really nice, even on dust. Um, I forgot to mention this strap, but <laughs> this strap really doesn't do anything. Um, so I didn't really mention it, but yeah, I, I, I didn't really like it all too much. Like I said, if you, if you need a high top shoe, this is probably the only option that you have. Like, I don't really know of any other shoes that have a high cut like this. Like what other shoe has a high cut like this? The only shoe that I can really think of is probably the UA Drive 4 right now, which is like two years old. So yeah, that's my performance review on the Puma Sky. Again, if you guys want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.